How's it going, everyone? This is Dr. Hefe playing more Disco Elysium. And in the last episode, we broke into some guy's house for Everot Claire, and then we had a great idea. Why don't we break into apartments more often? So here we are. We're investigating this apartment building. We talked to a cigarette smoking guy who was pretty cool. But now we're trying to investigate where he is. But first, we gotta talk to Cindy. Cindy Ooh, the Skull. The piggies have learned how to saunter up staircases. I didn't think you could do that with hooves. But here you are. Beat cops don't like closed doors or unreachable perches or people having high ground on us. I feel like, dude, we're not we're not here to make trouble with anyone. Yeah, you got me now. The dynamic between us has completely changed. That smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint. It's heavy fuel oil. All right, let's ask her about it. Is that heavy fuel oil? Red dyed heavy fuel oil intended for exclusive use in government vehicles, to be precise. What did you think I was using? Aquarelles? Sucked it out of a cop's fuel tank myself. Back in Jamrock. Interesting. You'd better hand it over. Well, she already poured it all the way down the whole building. But we'll say that. Oh, what? You'll push me off this ledge and pry the bucket from my dead hands? I guess not. I guess not. <laughs> We're not that kind of police officer. So you won't talk about the murder, but maybe you can tell us something about the murder victim's missing armor. What do I care about some fucking tin eggshells? Come on, Cindy. Just help me out here. Ugh. All right. Sad piggy. I'll give you this one. I saw a little girl in the fishing village running around with military grade handwear. Look cute as hell. If you haven't been there, the village is a shithole down the coast from the main plaza. Have a good time. All right. Thanks, Cindy. So piggy, helpful. I have no idea why I just told you that. You look like a shaggy dog left in the rain for too long. I have a weakness for animals. Aww. Dude, <laughs> how many people have taken pity on us? First it was Lena, the cryptozoologist's wife. She called us her sweetie. The cleaning lady didn't take pity on us. I feel like everyone here is taking pity on us. I guess that's a good way to be a police officer. We just have people take pity on us. All right, let's pop into here, into this room. We're still trying to find the cigarette smoking man because he may have been an important witness to the murder. I guess that's still what we're trying to do. Someone's been sleeping here recently and they got a little cute cat on their pillow. That's cute. Enough coal to last for several winters. Smells of chemicals. Well, at least they won't stay fire suddenly you feel the boxes on fire why is it that pyrahilodon what's it called again i feel like i'm saying it incorrectly my drugs pyrahilodon everything's on fire it is it's pyrahilodon we found it oh my goodness we have six uses left of this thing i mean we're probably gonna use it just not right now. Oh, look at these. Pour le homme laboureur jeans. Let's see. Do we get rid of our flare cut trousers for these? Although these jeans look worn, the wearer must have had an ass given to them by the mighty lord himself. That beautiful peach shaped man ass has imprinted itself so deep in the fabric you can't but wonder if wearing them would start molding your own vague rear side into a more shapely form as well. Plus one electrochemistry god ass. Minus one for hind sided. Oh my goodness. Let's put them on. Kim, your character model is clipping into our ass. The pockets of these new jeans are perfect for sticking your hand into. Makes you look cool, calm, and collected. As C, your C, hand and C, baby! The pocket, your fingers brush against something soft yet crinkly. Oh, let's take it out. Hey, it's a chewing gum wrapper. It reminds you of the fruity juice of apricots. You should inspect it closer if you have time. Apricots. Something about the wrapper's texture 
is familiar. Not familiar in a good way, you might say. There's pain in there somewhere. Well, we enjoy jumping into pain, don't we? Don't we indeed? We sat on Everard Clare's frickin' chair for half an hour. Apricot chewing gum wrapper. A gleaming chewing gum wrapper found in the pocket of the Lebera jeans. It gives us an ever so faint scent of apricots. Your mouth starts watering. There it is again. The scent of apricots with a touch of cinnamon. Smells like the end of some distant summer. The surface of another planet. Or some ancient temple. Ancient temple? That sounds like something Apocalypse Cop would enjoy. Is it the Mayans telling us of the end of the world in 2012? Yes, from the height of antiquity. A long, long time ago. Millennia ago. On an island of time you can never return to. Dude, we look... <laughs> We definitely do look like a hobo cop with this hat on. My goodness. The sun sets into the sea, but the water does not boil. Instead, it turns to liquid gold. Mm. For a moment, the world's store of precious metals seems to increase dramatically, and you are rich. I mean, truly, is there anything greater than a beautiful sunset? There is a movement next to you. The shuffle of a small coat, warm like the evening. but. When you turn toward it, there's nothing there. But where did it go? I have good perception. I should see. Why are you talking to a gum wrapper? Oh. Fair enough, narrator. Fair enough. Let's take a deep, deep breath. Maybe this will get us a little high. Bitter, citrus, sweet. It seems to grow stronger, like a glow, with every breath you take. You know, apricot chewing gum sounds like a pretty okay flavor. Until a blossom of skin and flower petals erupts behind your closed eyes, made of toffee, cream, and distance. You just had to take a dive. Ooh, a blossom of skin and flower petals erupts behind your closed eyes. I mean, as weird of a movie as it is, it's giving me like an American Beauty kind of flashback. But let's keep the weird Kevin Spacey out of it. Your heart working overtime trying to keep up with the panicked synapses firing all over your brain, moving liters of blood through you, panicking. Yeah, let's put that wrapper away. We don't need to panic. What's this new thought we had, though? The apricot chewing gum scented one. You found a trace of entity who's been stalking you across the plains. Oh, d man, this game has so many freaking uh, ties to Planescape Torment. It's beautiful. The Gloom Stalker. The conglomeration, the shadowy organization behind your downfall, possibly connected to the dreaded X something. Granted, it is impossible to determine its true identity, but you can remember where you first smelled its treachery. Yes, use the Tutti Fruity gum wrapper. Reconstruct the day you first breathed in her untrustworthy atoms. Bruh. The first day, huh? Yeah, let's do minus one to reaction speed. We can be living in the past. That's fine. The apricot scented. The apricot chewing gum scented one. Tutti Fruity. Oh, Phoenix. What a great band. Now I just want to listen to that song. I feel like they talked about it in the letter, right? Tutti Fruity as well. Tutti Fruity Broken Bottles and Porcelain Something like that. I'm not doing them justice. My goodness. Their singer's so good. I'm just a poor Just a poor hobo cop trying to live my way in the world. Where's this taking us? More apartments? taking us outside. Outside the apartments. You know, this does remind me, we did have that quest to go talk to rich people. I believe this one? Yeah, Lena encouraged us to explain the world to you. Perhaps try a rich person. Rich people are educated. Well, let's see. Is she educated? You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Oh, we'll tell her that we talked to Everard Claire. You have. And how did you like Mr. Clare? Dude, he was an ass. Finally. 
Time to choose sides. <laughs> Physical instrument. I'm glad you're happy with him. I'm, he's not the champion I've chosen. I wish to swear fealty to you and the cause of capital. This sounds like a super ultra liberal idea. What? Yep, we got him money. Oh, I am afraid you have misread the situation, detective. This is not some feudal conflict. Messier. It is an Joyce Messier. That's her last name. And if it were a conflict, Rejoice the RCM Leighton would not pick Messier, sides. Perhaps? My colleague's unusual approach to police work does not represent the organization at this time. I've seen him, and believe me, it's a conflict. I've picked my side in the coming storm, and it's you. <laughs> okay, yes, perhaps I misread the situation as a bit more man from Heimdall than it is. No, we are definitely man from Heimdall. Well, I can't stop you, can I? Just understand that I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I'm not a corrupt verm myself. However, if you felt like passing some information... Yeah, yeah, I bet, I bet you wanted someone to help you? you, right? Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be... gossiping. See, she's... She's similar to Everard. I mean, she comes from wealth. She's flaunting her wealth. This boat, which I believe we said like costs more than our whole salary several times over. You know, she has hired mercenaries who have top-of-the-line armor and weaponry. But she's just a little bit more sophisticated than Everard. Tell her she'll like you for it. I helped him turn on the heat. On the borscht? Did you now? What sort of borscht is he making? The cook makes it to keep the strikers drunk. Helps them strike. The strike brew. That's a classic. And by turn up the heat, I presume you mean put more alcohol in it? Electrochemistry, I feel like you're steering me wrong again. I'm not sure whether she'll like me for this. Why, if I may ask? Why make them more drunk? Aren't they corked enough already? Yes, detective. What were you hoping to accomplish with this strange thing? I worship Al Ghul in many ways. <laughs> I wonder, can you even say this if you haven't talked to Measurehead? I feel like you can't, right? Because he's the one who talks about Al Ghul. Very curious. A very curious thing to do. Thanks. I'm glad we have plus five XP from talking about our worship of Al Ghul. Truly. But that's how he operates. He just does things, man, and then talks about them, even if it's inappropriate. Hey, what are you talking about, Kim? I got plus five XP. What else? Of course, detective. Yeah, nothing else. Should something come up later down the road, don't be afraid to drop by for a chat. Until then, is there anything I can help you with? Yeah, can you give me a lowdown on this reality we're in, man? This reality? No time to explain. Just give me the lowdown. No, but please. A little context. A little context. Oh, no. We're not in such a hurry. It's related to the medical episode. I have trouble remembering even the most basic terms of reality. Ah, yes, the episode. Sounds like an acute case of encephalopathy now that I think of it. Don't be faith, madame. He functions perfectly well. He only needs a lowdown on all of reality. Dude, Kim is so supportive. He only needs a lowdown on all of reality. Imagine you're showing up to work and you're like, yeah, yeah, you know what, buddy? Let me give you a lowdown on all of reality. It's cool. We may be here a while then. Ask away, officer. I'll help however I can. Oh my god. What are these super impossible things? We need to up our esprit de corps. Um, so, yeah, what is this acute encephalo encephalopathy you've been talking about? It's a neurological disorder caused by a lack of vitamin B in the brain. Symptoms include a retrograde amnesia. It's quite serious. You should get yourself checked out. That sounds pretty dangerous. What causes encephalopathy? Well, it's either bariatric surgery or long-term alcohol use. We could try and play it off as the surgery, but we have just told her we worship Al Ghul. She nods slowly. What this boils down to is this reality thing is stupid. Blow this joint. 
grab a bottle, and drain that shit right down your throat. <laughs> I have somewhere to party right now. Of course. Well, I'll be here if She you says, need me. apparently unsurprised. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I feel like we failed in our quest to get a reality lowdown. Alright, well, we'll come back to that. Maybe we'll have a, a drink or two and then come back to her. <laughs> I feel like we failed. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, good old electrochemistry. Alright, where's the cigarette smoking man? Come on. We can find that guy. How hard can it be? Ah, balcony. Here we go. Balcony exit. The game even spells it out for you. I wonder what this game looks like if you try a different translation. Like, do they translate those signs as well? Be something interesting to look at. Breaker box is full of cigarette butts and electric wires. That's probably where the cigarette smoking man is. Excuse me, but don't mind me. I'm just taking these uh, 12 coins for myself. I wonder why some of these are blue versus green. I forget why. Just a door. Nothing for you here right now. Okay, fair enough. Game. Rosemary, thyme, and a cactus. Oh, I should go look at my cactus. This is the door to apartment 29. Complete silence. Whoever lives here isn't home. Is that where their cigarette smoking man is? I thought he was in 28. Apartment 30. Voices from within singing along to some buoyant dance track. How very nice. And this one? This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. See, I don't got that encephalopathy. I remember. I remember where he was. Door 28. Let's see if anyone's home. Knock on the door. No one well, answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. We should return tomorrow after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9 p.m.? Sound good? 9 p.m., that is not 2100. But yeah, sure, that sounds tomorrow, good. Tomorrow, 9 p.m., right here. Apartment number 28. Good, let's go. Damn. Turns out it's quite tricky finding someone in a big apartment building. Don't worry. You get him. Thanks, reaction speed. You're always looking out for me. It's, uh... Alright, I feel like we've done enough going around, walking around. Maybe we can go see our friend Evrot Claire. If the loading screen will let us. On our way back to the docks. We'll see if there's anything to do. I think we're also supposed to talk to Kuno again. Manana had us, wanted us to talk to him. Do we look at this thing yet? This is a wall on the side of an apartment building. Wow, impossible conceptualization. We could try it, but I feel like we will definitely fail. Gotta roll the double twelves to get it. I feel like we haven't talked to this guy, though. Guy looking at a book. Working class woman. Sorry. Sorry for assuming your gender, ma'am. No ceremonies, just hello. No, no, no. A good one? Yes. Hello. Me? Who are you? No one. I'm just a working class woman. She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. So what are you doing? Looking for something to read. Oh, huh, good, good. It is. Alright, we'll leave. She doesn't seem to have much to tell us. Doesn't seem to have much to tell us at all. Alright, Kuno. You little punk. Tell me where that armor is. Fuck, does Kuno care? Kuno, we got any speed? Oh my god, let's not do that. Kuno dominated you. Hey! I talked to Manana about the armor. So? So? 
You told me you promised to sick the pigs on them. No, wait, no. He said to thank you? I forget what he said. He said you're now the king of the entire Jamrock? Uh, North Jamrock? Kuno meant everything north of 881. The rooster fucked Kuno's words up. Kuno doesn't do south. Doesn't fuck with the mother. Kuno sent your fat ass running around like jello. Look, pig. Kuno sent you to rough some people up. Kuno played you. That happened. Now you and Kuno should move on. <laughs> Kuno. Oh, my God. I've missed you. I missed you in your, your silly ways. I will remember this, Kuno. You got fucked. You got fucked, pig. Jeez. Fucked bad. Of course you're going to remember this. Now get the fuck out of here, grief and the Kuno. After this shit, you better have something real interesting to say if you want to stay in Kuno's face. Yeah, real interesting. Wait, he didn't tell us about the armor. All right, let's ask. I feel like we should Kuno not ask him for drugs. Yeah, yeah, Kuno doesn't fucking care. Story of my life. Do we try looking at this thing? You see a set of oh, tires visual calculus. Slush that covers the plaza mosaic. Let's see. Do I have anything that improves visual calculus in my clothing? Let's see. Visual calculus plus one. Oh, we already are wearing our visual calculus items. Well, I mean, we could try it. You see a set of tires. Impossible. Slush that covers we have to the roll a ten. Oh, let's see. No. Oh, a These nine. Very not close. Interesting at all. Let the street sweeper just sweep them away. All right. Fair enough. Just not, not gonna be able to do it today. Let's just go talk to our homeboy Everart. Team on our way. Kim, you're getting a little bit blurry. Could be the alcohol, aka Al Ghul. Could be the pure holodon. All that wondering, man. How can I help you? Oh, the weasel I visited. Turns out he has one hell of a colonial mug collection. Yeah, the janitor who gave me the key to his apartment said the guy's a bit of an asshole. Man with such a funny mug collection can't be all that bad. That's pretty messed up. See how we're all busy concentrating on the racist mugs? That's what the ruling class wants. The mug collection certainly represented antiquated social values yes like i said before i don't know much about this weasel but the bossman said he's a real piece of work thanks for helping out friend all right fair enough nothing more to gain there manana he's not much of a one to be very forthcoming he's got his secrets that's all cool he's got his secrets we got ours I think we were also supposed to talk to the to the union members who we suspect of doing the hanging. They're hanging around in the whirling in rags. But I think we passed out when we opened up that letter from the X something. Okay, come on, Harry. You got this. I believe in you, Harry. I believe in you, Harry. Yeah, he's got this. No passing out today. Even though our morale is looking a little bit low. But we have tons of drugs. Tons of magnesium. That'll do us just right. Just right. All right, Everard. You sent me on a little mission. I did your little errand boy duties. Now tell me what I want to know. Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. You don't have to sit down this time, since you've already sat on that chair. Oh, thank goodness, because that chair sucked. It almost destroyed my ass, and I'm trying to get a nice fit ass with these new jeans. So now tell me about the frickin' murder. I'm very glad to hear that, Harry. Look at that experience, One baby. One question. You didn't actually happen to stumble in and see what's inside the apartment, did you? Yeah. I did go inside, and I saw a collection of racist mugs. Just as I thought. Culturally antiquated mug collection. What a weasel. Pissing on Everart's Rainbow Coalition. Now let's get down to brass tacks. It's time for men like me and you to figure out who's killed who and why. Real police work is going to start happening now. 
I promise you, Harry, this is gonna be good. The mug collection I mentioned was in the apartment. I found a similar mug in the trash with the hanged man's clothes. I feel like this is kind of getting off topic. Let's talk about the lynching and the strike. By now, I'm sure you've figured out who the dead man was working for. The bad guys. Wild pines. Sent to scare us. Another violent measure of the top hats against us flat caps. All right, all right, go on, go on. Harry, this strike is the culmination of many, many mistakes made by the Wild Pines group. They tried to shut the strike down by sending in armed mercenaries. You mean our victim? A security contractor. Can you imagine that? Workers standing in peaceful protest, united in the spirit of fellowship, and they send hired killers to mow us down with machine gun fire. He performs a motion as if spraying bullets from a machine gun. I would have loved for them to have animated that motion. I could see him doing that. Didn't he do like a finger gun thing when he told, uh, told us to leave last time? I feel like he did. I'm talking beasts, hardened killers from proxy wars in Yisut, Seminine, Salamaritza. You name it, they've done it. Raping, killing, burning villages, Killing little children for the Senorita Pineapple Company, Harry. Yes, we know that they did that. They are some disturbing people, that is true. Those Senorita Pineapple people are scary motherfuckers. Decimating your state if you don't give them your pineapples. I wonder what real world, aka Earth, corollary this could be talking about. Mm, Chiquita bananas, maybe. Possibly something, and I, I don't forget. I forget what it could be. Everything they did there, they brought over here. They want to turn Revachol into a third world slum. Honestly, the only thing they didn't do is kill the village elephant. Let's, let's not talk about this. All right, go on. Now, I haven't personally witnessed the brutalities out there. I have the luxury of staying in my container, you see. If I need to go somewhere, they just move my container. Okay, but seriously, they just move your container? Yes. I'm an old man, Harry. My legs aren't what they used to be. They lift my office with that big crane. It's actually very fun. You should try it. I'm not sure whether you're just messing with us, Everard, but that is very interesting if that's actually what you do. But enough about me and my fun container. Oh, cop of the the killers the company hired. And my I fun think there container. Were three of them. All hardened commando types. <laughs> One of them got downright suicidal, getting drunk, violent, a little rapey. Even their own negotiator couldn't control him. That's your boy, the one who likes hanging out and trees. That's... I mean, even though the person who was killed doesn't sound like a great person at all, I feel like your way of referring to him is a little bit flippant. Everard. By negotiator, you mean Joyce? Harry, what you need to realize is we dock workers are not pushovers. Why does he keep ignoring Kim? We got grit, Harry. This whole neighborhood does. Is it because he's a racist? Push us hard enough and we push back. And when we do, we push to kill. An entire neighborhood of killers. Well, exact. Yeah, who exactly did the pushing? There's a militant wing inside the union. A group of people whose duties don't involve manual labor, but peacekeeping in the neighborhood, making sure everything runs smoothly. Damn, this really is like a mafia, like a mob. He's set up, he's got his own enforcers. They're like you guys. Like you guys, that doesn't Idealistic sound like they're like people us. who want to make sure bad things don't happen. And if they already have, well, Punishment must follow. Sounds like they're vigilantes. Although I guess a lot of people think that we are vigilantes as officers of the RCM. But we have some, uh, what, rights? Habeas corpus? No, that's not it. We have some sort of rights to go around and police. I don't know if you dock workers were given that by the moral lintern. So these idealists killed our victim? Hmm. One day Titus Hardy, leader of this peacekeeping faction, comes up to me and says, Boss, socialist democratic fervor drove us to take it upon ourselves to kill this beast that was burdening the land. So is Titus Hardy. Case solved. He probably worded it differently, but that was the idea. Sure sounded to me like they killed him. <laughs> I gave them two weeks paid leave and told them to lay low to avoid retaliation. Aren't you worried we might arrest them for this? Oh, I'm not at all worried about that. 
These are not the kind of men who get arrested. They're Martinez boys, tough and gritty. I'd like to see the man who takes them in. Besides, I sent my lawyer girl to look after them. So... Dude, it is it's it definitely is like a mob. I sent my lawyer girl to look after them. And wasn't uh Easy Leo telling us about a lawyer that he sent to get educated to come back here? How do you know the mercenaries are hired by the shipping company? I How feel like I this know? is pretty Let obvious. Let me tell you about these people. That's, yeah, their, that's MO. their MO. Last winter, some poor workers in Terminal E went on a little strike. The company sent in Sediment, a security contractor. The strike was over the workers' right to wear protective footwear, Harry. These guys turn up and start beating people. Tell you what, Harry, I wouldn't be surprised if we got the same mercenary company after a little rebranding. And I'm sure as hell not surprised to see an army of scabs under my gates. So you believe the scabs were organized by the security contractor? You said it. Hell, one of those guys looks big enough to take down that proverbial elephant. Boys like that don't just happen to show up during strikes. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. And we do know that the scab leader is part of that mercenary company. So do we share with him this information? The name of the company is Cronell this time. It may have been sediment before. I'm sure he knows that already. Let's see if we can get some more out of him by saying this. Of course. You're always one step ahead of me, Harry. I'm no genius. I'm in this position because people like me. Hmm. Dude, you're such a slimy dude. I don't know. Maybe if we say this, I don't know. I don't know if we want to tell him that. Let's By change the means, subject. Harry, what's on your mind? I feel like we can go down this the same path again. How do I Last winter, yeah, yeah, yeah. he'll say the guys, same thing. So be... you typical, Hell, typical, Harry. Absolutely. RPG thing where you can uh, go down the same thing to get the same dialogue again. Okay, tell me about the lawyer girl. Oh, Liz is a bright one. I paid for that law degree myself, thinking it'll probably turn her all fancy. But hell, Harry, she came back a firebrand socialist. Sometimes she scares me with her zeal. Yeah, yeah, sure. Acting like you're surprised that the person you paid to go to law school came back to help you out. Oh, they are simply fine young men, all seven of them. Exemplary union members, always working to advance their position in the local socialist democratic movement. Core members. Old Theo used to run them, but things really kicked into gear when Titus took the Theo. reins and named the group after himself. Easy Theo? <laughs> Gotta love his initiative. Or Easy Leo. Wait, who's Theo? Interesting. Who's second in command? They're almost all of them great guys, born leaders. Whatever happened, I'm sure they only had the best interests of Martinez and Revachol in mind. Work with them. Hell, interview them. But don't fight them. They really are just like you. Men who like beer, women, and some order on the streets. Yeah, but do they like physically toned men? Men who should join the track team. You know what, Harry? I got a feeling they're going to show up in full force tomorrow. The lieutenant marks something in his notebook. In the future, I could use your backing. Can you ask the Hardy Boys to cooperate? But of course. It's the least I can do for my good friend Harry. I'll do it right after we've concluded this talk. I hope you do, because I feel like that is just something you would say and not do. When you meet this, Titus, tell him about this. See what he has to say. Oh, for sure, Authority. Also, Harry, here's five real. All right, thanks. The lieutenant watches you pocket the banknote. He looks a little puzzled. Dude, if someone hands you some money, you just take it. Good boy, a real team player. Now, do you have any more questions? All right, we're going to conclude for now. Was it a good tour? I'm not sure we made much headway here. I was hoping we'd bust the case wide open. Heck, I even wanted to tell you what I really want to achieve with the strike. I don't know what happened, Harry. I wanted you to feel like Mr. Martin A's. And of course, I also wanted you to find your gun. But it's like I can't completely trust you yet. What the heck, dude? What a slime ball. He's just laying out the fishing line. He is a he is a fisherman. He's getting us hooked. Yet Yes, Harry. It's like I can't fully trust you if you're not a man of the left. I want to, but I just can't. He's been hurt too much in the past by men who aren't social democrats. 
I'm not a man of the left. I'm a patriot of Revishal. Yeah, 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 you're right not to trust me. I take care of me. I'm a hustler. I grind. I'm a money engineer. Dude, ultra liberal. Ultra liberal, man. You deserve to be on Wall Street bets. That's for sure. My goodness. To the moon, baby. To the moon. Perfect, Harry. That's perfect. My version of the left is not against the companies. It's with the companies. Honestly, what I have in mind is a business proposal. A left-wing business proposal, but still... Wow, he's still... <laughs> he still is just putting out his line. He's going along with it, even though we said we're a hustler. And what would this entail? Once again, I require nothing unethical or illegal of you. You just need to get two little signatures on this piece of paper and then mail it to my accountant in La Delta. Kim, what's your thoughts? It depends. I don't think what we just got from Mr. Clare was very useful. But he thinks it's your call. As I said, it weighs on me heavily. But once we get really talking, well, I'm going to hand you the keys to Martin Ayes and maybe even help you figure out who's behind this killing. Wait, you just told me it was Titus Hardy. What are you talking about, Everard? Okay, what are the signatures I'm glad for? You asked, Harry. The union is going to build a modern youth center in Martin Ayes. It will be righteous. We're going to get those teenagers off drugs and on roller skates. Roller skating? Not drugs, Harry. You like this. I like this? I thought I liked drugs. There's a nameless little street on the coast with some old houses around it. Most people have already signed. I just need two more signatures to get this mission off the ground, Harry. All right, what will happen to the current occupants? They are just going to have to deal with the construction noise for six months, and then they'll be living like kings. Right next to a fancy new youth center designed by the best architects from Stella Marie. Just deal with construction noise for six months. Man, I hate construction noise. I hate construction, even at any time of day. It sucks. Yeah, living like kings, huh? I feel like that's not going to be true. Mostly because you're a slime ball, but yeah, whatever. You bring joy to my heart, stuff. Harry. Such a pleasure to be working with you. Here, you need to get signatures from Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. The cul-de-sac is right past the pawn shop and across the canal. I hear there is some trouble with the water lock, but they should fix it by Wednesday morning. So that'll be tomorrow Once morning. Once you have the signatures, mail this to 13022 La Roca in La Delta. Then I know we can do business together. He runs his fingers through his thin, greasy hair. Greasy man. Most certainly. Okay, Harry, we got nothing. You... My dear Harry. Okay, okay, okay. I rarely I do. I just want to leave. See you soon, Debarger. Just kidding, but not too much. Oh man, he's trying to have us be part of the union. Oh yeah, we got our apocalypse club. Let us finally Cut embrace Ta'alo. It's not fire. It's not ash. There will most certainly be a sea of corpses leading up to the event. But it won't be war or pestilence that causes it. Oh no, the event will belong to a genre of cataclysm. No man has dared to suspect would ever come to pass. You can only sense the shape of it, like a cavity, a pit opening up in your stomach, a throat into which the world will vanish. The streets, the grass, the stars, all will be rolled back. By whom? By what? And how? You don't know. All you know is, you're not joking around. Dude, we ain't joking around. The apocalypse is coming. So we have Learning Cap for Inland Empire, raised to six, and Learning Cap for Shivers, raised to six. So we got rid of our minus one rhetoric. So we're now back to a good old plane zero. And we can raise our Inland Empire pretty high. But our Shivers was already pretty high. So that doesn't really help us there. Interesting. Interesting what being a cop of the apocalypse will do for you. So what What more do we have to do? We can't get across the water lock. I think now we need to go back and interview Titus Hardy and his boys. We know where they are. We know they're at the Whirling in Rags. If only we could have some teleportation abilities. But we don't have that right now, so we'll just have to run over there. So, yeah, you know what? Let's save it here, and then I can run over there during the recap uh, 
this episode. So yeah, that'll do it for this one. If you've been enjoying this series, you can subscribe for more Disco Elysium, the Final Cut content. And until next time, do remember, as always, to take care of yourself and keep it disco, baby. Keep it disco.